This video is the first one from a short series of real-time tutorials that I prepared for you as my way of saying thanks for the amount of likes and comments that my videos recently received and it means a lot to have my work valued so highly. What I want to publish here this week are three real-time video lessons and in each to address different subjects. All of these have one thing in common and that's me receiving questions about them all the time. And that's color mixing, how to sketch a portrait and finally how to paint a portrait. Today's video will cover the color mixing part. We'll be using minimal materials, which means three colors and a student grade paper. I highly recommend to paint along. So get your art supplies out and let's paint together in this real time tutorial. So this is Queen Acridon Gold Hue by Schminky Herodan. Permanent Alizarin Crimson by Winsor & Newton. This is Paints Grey also by Winsor & Newton. These are professionals watercolors. I have a porcelain palette here. We are going to first check out these colors. What combinations can we get from them so that we are prepared and more like steady and ready to use them in a painting. I think this is a perfect palette for start. You don't need to buy a lot of colors, but if you have a choice, buy artist grade watercolors because you will really feel it uh, throughout the process. We are working with light fast paints. What I love about Winsor & Newton's Paints Grey and if you get a different brand your Paints Grey might look differently but this one is very bluish which means that you can use it as a primary color. It's semi-transparent because it has such high tinting strength. You can water it down to make it almost transparent and it's also very dark so you can use it for dark backgrounds, you can create shadows with them, even mix violet and a nice, really nice shade by the way with these two paints, uh, which I'm going to show you in a second. So I find it very versatile and even on its own it has a beautiful color. Yeah. Those are great paints. Buy smaller tubes if you're on a budget, but buy higher quality paints. Many of you are on a budget, so I'm just trying not to use too many colors in these videos. Yeah, we've got them here. I would like to use something that it is most likely that you have something similar at home. This is 300 GSM paper and it's cellulose paper. It's more likely that you have something like this. Let's paint some swatches. When you're setting up for your watercolor painting, don't forget to use your tissues and to have them at hand in case that you spill something. It's very handy. Here's a jar filled with water. You can have another jar with clean water. I have two jars of water. This one I will put on the side so that I can rinse my brush brush in it and mix it with new paint so that my paint mixes come out as clean as possible. Brushes, yeah, this is for the details. Maybe I won't need it but I'll keep it at hand just in case. That's just a regular synthetic brush. This one is Da Vinci for the basic. Any synthetic brush that has a sharp tip will do the job. Yeah, and these are my two uh, silver black velvet and it's sized six and eight. So you can find that in the description. I like my water bottle as well because I can just like spray it on top of these paints and they will dry much slower. What I love about this Queen Acridon Gold Hue is that if I use it like more thickly, then it looks like the, the raw sienna. And if I water it down, I get a lovely transparent yellow. So that makes it very versatile. I'm a big fan of this particular shade. And then we have the uh, the permanent alizarin crimson. Normally I use that one for portraits more often than not. And if you water it down, you can see lovely transparent color, but it's also like full and very vibrant. And now let's check the paints gray. And this is very like typical for the Winsor and Newton's paints gray. It is bluish, but also very dark. It's like the convenience type of paint because you will be very quick to mix the darker mixes that we are going to need for the details, for example, or the hair. We can paint someone with very dark hair and I will show you how to mix the paint so that you can achieve the dark color. Let's mix the paints. The basic skin tone usually is acquired by mixing the red and the yellow. So I'll just grab just a bit of the Queen Acridon gold and uh, don't, don't forget to just water it down. We need 
transparent paint. And then add a bit of permanent alizarin crimson and test your mix. So this is how you go about mixing. You always need a paper to test your paint. And now you have to judge visually. Is this the proper skin tone that you want it or is this too yellow? For me it's too yellow still. Might work in some parts of the portrait but I already picked a reference and from what I can see it's much more like rosy than this. So I'm just gonna add a bit of the permanent alizarin crimson and then try again. Still too yellow, so we're continuing. This is a safer <laughs> approach to mixing than adding too much red and then having to water it down and waste a lot of paint. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, we are... we're getting more on the rosy side. I like this skin tone. I like that very much, but look at the range that we've acquired. Like we can continue adding alizarin crimson and achieving some really interesting hues. It would be very good for you if you grab your testing paper and just mix these one by one and slightly adding a bit of a permanent alizarin crimson into the mix so that you can see what range you can achieve. And that's, that's just how you get it into your hand and into your head and you have this visual library to use when you're painting. And you don't have to think about too much, like, how do I achieve that skin tone? Just keep this uh, swatch sheet next to your paper and you can reference that by looking at it while you are painting. You can even, like, cut this paper out. I usually, actually... Usually I just use these like loose type of papers and then I just compare it with my reference literally side by side so that I can see. I can see better. If we want to achieve darker skin tones, we're gonna need to add a bit of the paint's gray. So we have this mix in here. Let's add a bit of the paint's gray. And let's make a range. Ha! Added too much. Never mind. Yeah, we're going darker, definitely. But we also have to like get back and add a bit more yellow and red also. Because this time around, we really need a mix that contains more pigments if we want to go, go darker. Okay, so I'll start a new line. This is a brown. Here's a brown. I just, into that, that was very transparent, I added a few more of these pigments, all three of them actually. So I get a more pigmented mix to like get more coverage and to get the paint slightly darker. Let's try that again. <laughs> now, now, for example, my yellow is prevailing the mix. Now, what do we do and how would it, what would it look like if the red was prevailing the mix? You get that type of brown. See, that's also a nice range of tones that you can use. Now, let's add more of the paints gray. Yeah, we get something that's uh, closing on Van Dyke brown type of brown, which is like colder type of brown, and I really like to use it in portraits. Let's add some more of the paints gray. Yeah, even darker. And more of it. Yay! See, we're almost black. And that's, that's my second point. Uh, that's how you mix black. Actually, you mix all three primaries together adding slightly one by one and trying to search for the balance. And if it's somewhere in the middle, then, then this type of black is the result. Yeah, we can, we can dilute it and it's kind of warm. We could add slightly more of the paint's gray to make it slightly cooler. Yeah. My point is, this palette of three colors gets very versatile and you really should do these exercises if you want to handle mixing. It's not that hard and it's actually a lot more fun than if you have a palette full of different colors and shades and you are not sure when to use which. Basically, this is all that we need for portrait. Not much else, but we can also try to see what kind of greens we get and what kind of violets we get, the purples we could use. So let's check the purple first. 
So this is the alizarin crimson. I'm verbally challenged today. This is the alizarin crimson and let's mix it with paints gray. Now the mixture, okay, ah, let's be more systematic here. So one more time, I messed it up. Okay, if you if we want to be systematic, we really need to stop messing around and focus. So it, this line is gonna be starting from the alizarin crimson and slightly adding the paint's gray into the mix. So we're gonna get something like this. Then we're gonna add a few more bits of paint's gray and you can see how it moves towards the violets. Okay, few more, few more touches of the paint's gray. And we are still on the red side of this mix. Now, hopefully, we are starting to move towards the, the paint's gray, towards the blue side. I'm adding more and more, hoping that it will be where I want it to be by the end of this line. Am I there? Maybe. Yeah, something like this. And if you water this down, you get a beautiful shade of violet. See? So these are our violets. And now let's try to do the green. We need to start from the queen gold. Never forget that to achieve lighter version, you just need to water it down. This is a lovely transparent yellow. And we're gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna set something aside for the mixing. And now we're gonna grab a bit of the paint's gray. Now be careful because this queen gold is a very light color and when you add too much of the paint's gray, it's gonna just overpower the yellow mix right from the start. So we're just gonna add a hint. Just gonna add a bit. Okay, that didn't do much, I was too careful. All right, let's see. Now we're starting to be green. And a bit more. And basically we're here. And if we water this down, you get some nice transparent greens. I love this palette, look at it, like how many colors do you need? Three is all that you need and actually it's good for you because you're gonna practice mixing and also having three colors will really allow you on a budget to get the highest grade of paint possible. So I can't recommend this enough, just get the high quality primaries and practice this. So now we have a color board. How do you call it? We have a color palette and you know how to mix individual items on the list. Yeah, and this is all that you need. And we can paint the portrait now. Thank you so much for joining me for this real-time paint with me session. And in the next video, we'll sketch a portrait together. I will give you some tips on how to check if the proportions are right. And basically, we'll show you a few tips on how I do it personally. If you want to just quickly sketch a portrait and then paint it, which will follow in the next two video lessons. Stay tuned, maybe subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you shortly.